Hey fellow golfers, this is Robbie from Best Ball. One of the most popular names in the golf accessory market today is Western Birch. Stop reaching in your pocket for boring plastic or plain white golf tees and elevate your game with premium wooden golf tees from Western Birch. You can customize both the hardwood and bamboo tees with one of their signature stripe patterns in a wide variety of colors. These tees are stylish enough to stand apart from the crowd, traditional enough to align with golf's heritage, and durable enough to make you forget about using anything else. Enter the code BESTBALL in the promo field in your shipping cart to add a free gift to your order. So visit westernbirch.com and get your own premium wood golf tees and the style that suits your game. Some of the purists out there may not agree, but I think, again, more things that you can do, one, to have more time to play golf, but two, I think attract a wider audience that's still going to love and respect the game, I think is, you know, we, we need to continue to do that. Even though we're in kind of a golf boom right now, the reality is that may not sustain itself, but I think ways to incorporate flexible, you know, playtime, flexible, uh, you know, avenues to get to the course, I think is, is only going to be advantageous for, for those courses and the owners of those courses as we go forward. Sports fans, and welcome to another episode of the Whole Story Podcast. I'm Jonathan, hanging out here with my good buddy Robbie, and we have another special guest, Brian Tweed, a fellow Midwesterner, uh, at least my origins of the Midwest, as I get stuck in the South now. So, Brian, uh, your Twitter says that you're a lover of all things golf and movies. He's got a blog if you're looking to tour the Midwest and find some uh, fun courses. So, welcome to the Whole Story Podcast. No, that, thank you, gentlemen, and and uh, yes, a lover of golf and movies. Uh, I'm a better movie watcher than I am a golfer, but excited to to talk about anything you like on the on the podcast today. Well, it takes a little bit of talent to watch movie, and a lot of talent to play golf. So, well, well yeah, well, yeah, staying awake, I can do that. Yeah. So if if we're th- we're talking about golf, you know, typically if you're listing the places, right? You got Bandon, you got Sweetens Cove, you've got uh, Pebble Beach, Pinehurst. So where exactly are the hidden gems in the Midwest to go play golf? Because I don't know if they're usually at the top of anybody's bucket list. Yeah, you know, it's, that's a great point. Um, and, and, and shame on me because I haven't been to Bandon. I haven't been to Kohler. But I can give you a little bit of better perspective on some of the hidden gems. So uh, be, being in Chicagoland, we're, we're not too far away from, like, the Lake Geneva area. And so to, for me, that's kind of like a, a hidden hotbed uh, of some really great courses. So you've got three at Geneva National. You've got two at Grand Geneva. And then Hawksview in that area has um, a regulation course and then a, an 18-hole short course, which is really fun. So I um, always enjoy going to that area, and I think price point-wise is, is, is really good. Um, everybody loves Lasonia, and I've only been there once, and, and maybe did, it didn't strike me as, as uh, the, the greatest course in the world as it does for some others. But in terms of a, of a value and kind of a top 100 caliber public course, I uh, highly recommend Lasonia, and I hope to get back there and maybe have a – little bit of a change of heart um, as many have it as some of their favorite courses in the Midwest um, and then I think finally um, in kind of the Brainerd Lakes Minnesota area is, is a spot that I always like to recommend for those that are looking for kind of a, a, of a lower price vacation um, there's there's about eight to ten different courses in that area I know that Tom Blayman recently did a redo on some of the Kragen's courses that is there um, Deacon's Lodge I think is one of the biggest hidden gems in all the Midwest in that area it's a probably the best public Arnold Palmer design, at least in the Midwest, if not the entire country. So I think you've really got some good golf that maybe doesn't get all the headlines or isn't kind of a named uh, area, but is well worth a dollar. Well, and the headlines are the part of it, right? You've got all the places that are infamous or famous for one reason or the other. Uh, go back to the one you mentioned, a short a short par course for number 18. Is that just a par three? Does it include par yeah, fours? Or? So, uh, so for uh, – at, at, um, Hawksview, there's a course called, uh, I think it's Barn Swallow, and it's an 18-hole uh, par-3 course uh, oh, wow. that they have as part of the uh, the setup there. So they've got 36 holes on site, and uh, one is a more traditional 18 regular, uh, regular course and then another short course. And I think one of the great things we're starting to see in the Midwest, but certainly at a lot of those destination uh, resorts as well, is more of those short courses popping up, and I think giving people – you know, the opportunity to where if they don't have four or five or six hours in some cases to play, you know, get somewhere out and just hack it around and then uh, get back to whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. 
We just had uh, Jared Dorfler, who's from Iowa. He talks all things golf and business. And one of the things he mentioned was was kind of that short course, the par three, the the lit par threes, uh, kind of taking over and that being a, a market in golf that will attract more people. And you mentioned, you know, 36 holes on property. Um, just how cool it is to maybe play around at like the, the big name course, the big course, and then be able to, to chill out with your buddies and go play play the short course. Yeah, I think it's as we kind of think of how, you know, the, the growing the game mentality and there's there's different feelings around that. But I think you've kind of taken that top golf mentality, but now actually getting some transition of that actually on uh, to, to a golf course, I think, is really the next step. Um, you know, I, I've planned uh, now a, a fraternity buddies trip. This will be our 16th year going on the trip. Uh, we're going to Toronto later this year and we won't really go anywhere unless there's some type of short course that's involved, if at all possible. And so to your point, we love to go out and pretend like we're college kids for a few days and then you know we'll do 18 holes in you know in the morning and then kind of finish up on a par three and kind of make it really relax and i think that's just a great way for us to kind of cap the the trip but do so in a way that that's a little more leisurely yeah i was just out in tempe and they've got rolling hills lighted par three during the day it's a regular 18 hole course it has three or four par fours that you can play but then in the evening they shorten it up uh started at 9 30 at night and in this case, you're not chasing the sunset. You're just chasing midnight until they tell right. you to roll the carts back yeah. up. So it was right. fantastic. Right. And then chasing a golf ball, hopefully, you know. Uh, but, but uh, you know, I think that's uh, – I, I, you know, some of the purists out there may not agree, but I think, again, more things that you can do, one, to have more time to play golf, but two, I think attract a wider audience that's still going to love and respect the game, I think is, you know, we, we need to continue to do that. Even though we're in kind of a golf boom right now, the reality is that may not – sustain itself but i think ways to incorporate flexible you know play time flexible uh you know avenues to get to the course i think is is only going to be advantageous for for those courses and the owners of those courses as we go forward hey golf friends this is robbie from best ball are you looking for the ultimate myrtle beach golf experience well it's only a click away check out the two play special at two of america's most awarded public golf courses and two of my personal favorites Caledonia Golf and Fish Club and True Blue Golf Club are low country masterpieces featuring two iconic Mike Strance designs. Play these two incredible courses for one great price. Visit TrueBlueGolf.com to learn more about the two play special and book your tee time today. That's TrueBlueGolf.com. Well, of the 91,000 uh, or 9,100 uh, people that are following you on, on X or Twitter, uh, you often post about where you've gotten to play and, and where you're looking forward to play. And you make a lot of people jealous, um, but you, you recently <laughs> thrown out the uh, tweeter top 10 or, or the courses you want to play this year. Uh, what are you excited the most? Where, where are you looking forward to play the most this year? Well, it, well, first and foremost, uh, I, I, I don't mean to make people jealous, but I'm fortunate and I've kind of become a little bit of a golf auction psychopath uh, over the last few years. And, <laughs> and, and But with that, it, it's, it provides me an opportunity, one, to play great places, but two, to also give access you know, to others to join me during those those auction renewals that maybe wouldn't have had a chance to play otherwise. Um, but I, I mean, I, I have a chance to play Marion, you know, uh, which is just kind of a never thought in, the, in a million years that that would be an opportunity and was fortunate to donate, you know, uh, win a donation for a relatively <laughs> consumable price. Um, and, and it were uh, opportunity potentially to play Chicago golf club and crystal downs, many of it through the connections that I've made on, on Twitter. Um, and so I think it, it just reinforces that if you're engaged and you make friends and communities and leverage social media in a positive way, you can open up doors that you never would have imagined. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're going on a, on our golf trip to Toronto. And so we're doing uh, TPC of Toronto. We're doing the paintbrush in the pulpit, which is another uh, great 36 hole uh, design that's nearby where we're staying. And I'm going to tack on a couple of more uh, in, in that area. One of them being Toronto golf club. So, um, so I've, I've kind of learned where I travel for work, where we're going for, for the golf trips and then try to pick up some, some shoulder season opportunities there as well. We saw, uh, I saw old Barnwell in there. That's in Aiken, which is right between yeah. me and Columbia and Jonathan and Augusta. So we've gotten to play it. Uh, you are going to love that place. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't have it scheduled yet, but if you both want to join me, um, let's let's make that happen. So, do you, um, do you have a time that you're coming this direction? I I, I don't, um, but I will I will keep you guys posted. And again, always like to try to to pay things forward. So I please I'm do. Excited, I'm excited about that one as well. Um, for for the a few folks that I follow on Twitter that have played it and put pictures out there, and 
uh, you know, what Brian Schneider and the you know some of the dope uh, former guys have done has been really cool. So I'm I'm really excited about that one. And like Aiken's becoming kind of like this, you know, mini mecca all of a sudden out there. That's right. Um, and and you know, really excited about what that area is starting to produce. Yeah, there's supposed to be um, the 21 that's coming over in Jackson Tree right. Farm that's just up the road. Uh, there's rumors of another 36 hole course, 36 holes that are coming in just on the river, uh, trying to make it into some sort of event center type stuff. So maybe Augusta will become more of a year round trip for golfers instead of just the one week in April. Just the one week, yeah. Uh, Although okay, it is a fun my, week. Yeah, uh, but I, I I've been a member uh, at, that's at Old Barnwell, and they've got at least another tw- uh, 18, if not 36 holes they're mm-hmm. going to build there. And again, a lot of it centered around family and right. and having flexible routings as well. So I just th- I think. Yeah, that that area is going to be be really sought after as we continue to go forward, and I think it's just fun to see where pockets of of golf destinations are popping up all across the country. You kind of mentioned the community within the social media and golf. Uh, the number of folks that we found through social media, obviously, to get on the podcast, but then the stories they have of going around and meeting new folks they never would have met, or connecting while they're in that city with someone because they happen to follow each other on Instagram or Twitter. So. Where have you gone where you've been like the craziest place I've been just because of some random person on social media? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I, to candidly, I'm usually one that's kind of initiating it. So, again, I, I've, um, I, you know, won a fair amount of, of golf auctions more than I'd want to even say publicly. Um, and, and what's been cool is that as I've, you know, either pushed out, you know, via social media about opportunities to play or I've connected with people on, on Twitter. Now I know that whenever I go back to those area, I've got a crew that I can play with and that we can get out and, and hit the links whenever I come out. Um, and because I probably met over 150 people, you know, through through Twitter and just you know, uh, getting onto different courses and playing. Um, but a great example to your point was um, I pushed out about. Uh, around this time last year, I was going to be playing in Charlotte and just said, hey, what's what's some of the best public courses in the area? And uh, a, a gentleman, one of my followers said, hey, I've got an opportunity at one of at my club coming over and um, I've met him. And now I'm coming back to the Raleigh and Charlotte area um, next week. And we're going to we're going to play a different course because I've got an opening. So I think it just speaks to uh, you know, paying it forward and keeping those relationships going. And, and uh, now some of the best friends that I have in the Chicagoland area and in other markets are through connections that I've made through golf and through golf Twitter. Yeah, it's fun to see. Uh, and that's like Jonathan was saying, it's fun to see the positive side of the golf Twitter space uh, or golf social media where, like you were saying, pay it forward. People are meeting, meeting each other, encouraging each other. I mean, that's one thing we love seeing um, a lot of smaller brands out there and companies, you know, I'll throw one example out there, uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler Johnson with the Charlie golf go, right? Like develops these toddler golf bags and it's just, it's blowing up. I think he said he fulfilled 300 orders this morning in 19 minutes. And, He's just, he's doing it right. Um, and it's fun to encourage, uh, and support folks like that. So, um, that's really cool what you're doing, uh, what you're doing in the golf space, but yes, let's, we will definitely keep in touch and figure out a time, either one, we're coming where you are, or when you're coming this way, we'll connect. Yeah. Well, and and I would say, you know, come to Chicago land, but basically June through August, (laughs) because otherwise (laughs) the risk of snow is there. Um, and one of the reasons why I like to get out and travel as much, but, I think, you know, Robbie, to your point is that while social media can be a little bit of a cesspool and, it, and it's you know, sometimes kind of a, of a nasty environment, I think golf Twitter is one of the few that, that typically isn't that. Um, and I think, you know, we all love the game. We all love it for maybe slightly different reasons. But I think with that as the backdrop and the foundation, uh, it, it provides, I think, a wealth of opportunity for people to connect for new ideas, as you mentioned, about products and about companies. And I think, you know, paying that forward in a way that, really most other industries or other types of sports or games really don't have. So um, you you will, you will get, I think from time to time, some architectural arguments, you know, that I see on Twitter or, you know, different traditions that some people may value more than others. But to me, I I never want to see that as, as a, uh, as a negative. I think it's just an opportunity for a conversation and a dialogue. Yeah. We always talk about golf is more about who you get to play with and the stories that come from it uh, versus the courses you get to play, which Great. It's it's really cool to play nice places, but it's about who you play with. And we haven't said yet, uh, hey, what do you shoot? I want to make sure you qualify to play with us because Jonathan and I, admittedly, we're not the greatest golfers in the world, but we have a good time. We love uh, the company out there. So, 
Well, and, and I'm the same way. And well, as I said, I'm very fortunate uh, to I've been able to play some really you know, great golf courses, you know, throughout my lifetime. I've actually I've played 545 now as of as of today. Wow. And so I'm I'm on a on a, on a very good uh, trajectory. But at the same time, my best memories are, you know, the, the long putts that we somehow made or the Frenchies that we had and that miracle shot that we hit or, you know, a, a, a great drive pipe down the middle. That's what, what really matters. And for me personally, it almost always averages to like an 85. Does it, you know, I kind of joke that it doesn't matter how I start, where I play, what we do, you know, it's kind of the number. And so I'm kind of creeping around a nine handicap and it seems that that's just probably going to be where I'm going to be at. But there's far better, you know, far, far worse things to be doing in the world than being a nine handicap on great golf course. Did you say as of today, like you already got out and played some around this morning? No. Uh, oh, I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm heading out um, to the Southeast in the Pinehurst area next week. Um, and then I'll get out to, uh, to Charlotte, some other part, parts of the country this, this spring. Uh, but no, I've, I've been fortunate to play uh, 545 different golf courses over the wow. course of my lifetime. I've got a goal to hit a thousand. And so I'm, I'm 40 years old, uh, you know, God willing, and, and, and with good health, I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully get there sooner than later. And so, um, you know, that that's also kind of part of my psychosis of playing, you know, played a lot of different places is to get to that number. Well, if you're 40 and I've already played 545, that didn't that means you didn't start when you were 30. So Correct. where did where did golf begin in your life? Um, probably around the age of 10, as I said, I grew up in central Illinois and it wasn't like there's a whole bunch of options for golf, but there no. was a, uh, a little par three, nine hole course called Royal links. That's actually now a, a housing development, <laughs> um, in central Illinois, but my dad loves the game and, and got me involved in it, um, as a, as a kid, um, and, you know, kind of gravitated to it. Uh, you guys can't tell, maybe you can, but I'm, I'm short, I'm five foot five. I don't have a lot of physical ability. So golf is going to be kind of the. The, the last resort in terms of any type of sport I could play, and maybe my dad knew that from, from Jump Street, um, <laughs> but just, you know, fell in love with the game and, and enjoyed playing with my dad, and then I got pretty good as a junior, you know, and kind of hold my own. It could compete in some tournaments as I was growing up through middle school and high school, and, and I played in high school uh, competitively for, for four years, and so... Um, you really, you know, enjoyed just being outside and, and playing and, and enjoying the company. But it, it's it, the the goal of playing a lot of golf course just kind of spiraled out of control once I was done with college. Spiraled well, out of control. Yeah. Hey, no, it's uh, or or uh, managing the control, I guess, managing the chaos. So yeah. Yep. Well, one of the things we really like about uh, following you on social media is your, your love of movies. Uh, you mentioned Seinfeld, Hoosiers, uh, and all those things. So. Um, how, where did that come about? Uh, you know, have you always loved movies? What, you know, what, what genres do you like the most? Let's, let's chat about yeah. that a little bit. Um, yeah, I think similarly how I, I fell in love with the, the game of golf through my father. I think I fell in love with movies through my mother. You know, she's some of the, that I used to always watch movies with as a kid growing up. And, uh, I think like every teenager was kind of into like the horror and gory stuff, you know, um, uh, just because it was all the movies my parents probably didn't want me to watch. Um, uh, but I, I've I've now be, I think kind of gotten to more of like a crime, um, you know, mystery kind of you know dramatic theme, and so I uh, I try to watch as many of the the best picture nominees and the best actor and best actress nominees as they come through, and I've 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 even be, I think started to to enjoy and respect more of the international films or those that are subtitled or dubbed. I think again, there's wonderful movies internationally that have gotten a lot more exposure, and I think in recent years and decades that are great. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not necessarily like a huge movie savant. I never, you know, I think I took maybe one course in college. I don't necessarily know the intricacies of the industry, but um, I just love, you know, sitting down for a couple hours and kind of, you know, getting out of, <laughs> getting out of the, 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 the you know, the world uh, that, that kind of envelopes every day. I think it's about kind of taking some time off and just relaxing and enjoying something you have to think about. Not quite Siskel and Ebert. Uh, for those of you who are too young, Siskel and Ebert were two guys that used to review movies. Yeah, yeah, no, both of them rest in peace. I, it's funny, I, 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 showing my nerdness, I used to have like the Roger Ebert like movie review books, you know, when That's... I was a kid and had all that. So, um, yeah, yeah, no, I greatly respect them. I'm certainly not not to that level, but uh, but I can hold my own. I think in terms of having a conversation around different uh, different movies and and some of the the different aspects of the cinematography and, and musical scores, et cetera. You have Hoosiers listed, so I have to ask, since it's just a state over, have you been to the gym? 
Yes, um, uh, I've been to the gym, um, nice. and and you know I think uh, obviously you know going to Indiana University for school, albeit even though the, the, they've been terrible really at basketball ever since I've been there. Um, it, I think you know just to be um, you know in that state and understand the love of basketball and, and kind of the respect that that everybody has for the the sport there is is was really cool. I just wish it translate to better basketball product uh, on the court with my alma mater, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I've you know been to Hinkle, um, and you know many times my wife uh, went went to Butler, and so we've just got some really cool spots, uh, in, you know, including um, uh, you know the Assembly Hall, you know, in Bloomington, yeah. you know, in in Indiana. So yeah. very 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 cool state uh, for for basketball. Well, it might not translate to the college level, but you and I both know don't ever have a three point contest with anyone born in Indiana. They can no, shoot. That's, that they is can true. just all shoot. That's right. Unfortunately, they went to different schools, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, but but, uh, but absolutely, that is that that's a, a challenge I wouldn't want to take on. Today's podcast is sponsored by Atomic Golf. If you need custom ball markers, divot repair tools, and more that are made from high quality materials like solid copper and brass and look really good, then you should check out our friends at Atomic Golf. If courses like Old Barnwell, Landman, Sweetens Cove, and more are already working with them, then you should too. Visit AtomicGolf.club and follow them on Instagram at AtomicGolf. Well, I was going to ask, do you have a favorite sports movie? Because obviously there's lots of movies out there. Is Hoosiers the one, or is there something else out there that sort of piques your interest? Well, I'm sure I probably put out a, a Twitter top ten list for this in Twitter. I don't want to. I want to make sure I don't um, uh, conflict with myself. But it, it's probably Raging Bull or, or Field of Dreams. I think yeah. Raging Bull, just in terms of its cinematography and the story and the acting, I think is is exceptional when I'm a huge uh, Robert De Niro fan. And then the Field of Dreams, I think just um, its story and kind of the heartstrings about baseball. Uh, while I love golf, you know, baseball, if I could have played a sport, it, it would probably be my favorite. And I think just, you know, the the story about, you know, his his you know, father that passed away and whatnot, I think is is just really, really cool. I always cry every time I watch it. So so um, so those are probably the two that stand out in terms of like a, a golf movie. Obviously, you know, Caddyshack is there. But uh, but after, um, uh, you know, Chubbs uh, in his persona passed away uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was able to watch Happy Gilmore again. And so that was that's another good one, too. Is there a uh, is there a story or something in golf where they haven't made a movie yet? Now we had Alan Shipnuck on the uh, on the show back in the fall, and we asked him who was going to play him in the movie about uh, PGA and Live. But is there a story out there in the golf world that should be made into a movie? Well, so there's there's rumors, and I don't know how solid it is that there's going to be a John Daly movie, and so I think I think that that has to happen. Um, and, you know, and and in terms of who's playing, you know yet to be seen but uh i think that would that's got to be a story that somebody has to tell and then obviously um you know tiger woods and just the very complex life and career that he's had uh, you know that that's something that's going to have to be made a new movie and if anything it's probably going to have to be more of like a the 30 for 30 something like they did with you know the last dance with jordan i think to hit all hit all the different aspects of that career and the complexities there but uh i think those you know those characters i think have to be represented on screen as much as possible yeah, I think I'd watch that. I'd hope that they would focus more on the golf than maybe some of the rest of the stuff that, that happens. Like the, the Air Jordan movie that just came out. Like the mystique yeah. behind the whole environment. Yeah, there is. But what my contention would be, though, is that I think that, that the other aspects of what's happened to Tiger and some of those other golfers, that's a big component of of their sure. lives and, and, and maybe why or why they didn't have success, you know, um, you know, on the course perhaps as much. So I agree. I think we need to we need to certainly awe and respect what they've done on the golf course. But that's not the whole person. And so I think getting a balance of that is, is, is important. Well, you, uh, you talk about movies and I have to explain to my kids that, uh, when I say, Hey, I worked at a blockbuster in high school, they, they say, what's that? Yeah. Um, I think there's one more in, in Oregon, perhaps. I think yeah, the last one. one. Yeah. Yep. So, the last one. Uh, yeah. I, I remember getting the Netflix videos, but in the mail, in the mail. you know, <laughs> as it first started to come out. So I'm starting to age myself there a little bit, but um, yeah, I, there's no, there was nothing better than, you know, going to the movie store on a Friday night and picking a couple of movies out for the weekend. Yeah. And, and well, I, I was the one working there. Yeah. Well, there you go. That, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't do that, uh, but it actually would have been a cool job that that's maybe almost as good as stepping on the first team. There you go. I got, you got five free movies a week for working. So plus getting oh. paid. Man, it was wow. a great, yeah. great job. You know, if I can, if I could make a bunch of money doing that now, I would do that <laughs> tomorrow. And I think one of the first uh, first keys to you know 
doing a sales career outside of this was the fact that, uh, Jonathan, I don't know if I ever told you this, but I pre-sold the most uh, Titanic VHS uh, movies prior to it being released on, on VHS, and I won my very own copy of it. I was <laughs> so, say, did you win your own copy of it? <laughs> yeah, what a, what a prize. <laughs> yeah. funny, funny story around that. Um, so uh, there's a few movies that I've gone through a lifetime that I haven't watched, and for a long period of time, uh, almost like out of spite, you know, I didn't want to watch Titanic. Because uh, it was, again, the, the highest grossing movie of all time, and everybody loved it, and I just, it was like, oh, I just, it didn't, it didn't excite me at all, but then I was about a girl, and she wanted to watch it, and so eventually I had to cave, but <laughs> looking back on it, I was disappointed. I, I, I would like to think that I could have stayed steadfast and not watch Titanic like every other single person in the world. I'm a Kate Winslet fan, so I'll watch yeah, them all. Then, well, then you got a lot of her in that one, yeah. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Well, we always like to ask, uh, not necessarily about movies, but we always ask at some point, what is your most memorable golf shot? For good or bad? Well, I, I've had a hole in one, so I think that's probably the easy answer. Yeah. Um, and so it was just, it was a nine iron from 140 yards at a podunk place um, here in, in no, no, northwestern Chicagoland. And, but what was cool about it is that, because it was on a Saturday, it was really slow. And so uh, I was the first to tough, and there was a group coming off of the tee on the par three. And there was already another group that was coming up behind us. And so I hit, I thinned it actually, I thinned it, just landed just on the front of the green. It was a back pin, just whoop, rolled right in. And so it goes in. We all go nuts on the tee. The group coming off sees it, they go nuts. And then the group behind us, they all go nuts. And fortunately, I only had to buy beers for three people. But, uh, <laughs> But it was just, it was like my little, you know, tiger at the TPC Scottsdale kind of moment just because it was, it was such a crowded course at the time. So that's probably number one. Um, you know, my, my favorite time on the golf course, and I think where I truly fell in love with the game was I played Piners number two, which remains my favorite course, uh, on Christmas morning, 1998 with my grandfather, who was a member at the time, my, my dad and, and my wow. uncle. And so, well, there's not one singular shot necessarily that I remember from, from that other than probably 43 putts. Uh, it's, it was just that experience that, that I had with people that I love and, and just on a, on a great course at a great, <laughs> on, a, on a great day. It is, a, uh, it is a magical place, so that's a great memory. And again, it's about who you play with, right? Yep, absolutely. Yep. Well, normally we do something uh, at the end of our show is called a quick nine, but in honor of the tweeter top tens, we're going to do a quick Ooh. ten today and ask a bonus like question. It. Yeah, man. Okay. So uh, first question, favorite course that you've ever played? Um, I just mentioned it, Piners number two. Um However, the caveat is that I haven't played it since the Corn Crenshaw renovation. So my second favorite is, of course, I just played this past fall called Somerset Hills, which is an A.W. Tillinghast course and um, and just just phenomenal course, hilariously hard greens. Had a blast. What is your bucket list course? Um, public wise, I think you know Pebbles is is still there, right? I think um, you know that's always going to be one that I need to get out to, and I'm ashamed that I haven't yet. Um, here locally in Chicagoland at Chicago Golf Club, and so fingers crossed that I can scratch it off the list this year. And then, but my ultimate in, in North America would be Cypress Point. I think that's that's, uh, that's a lot of uh, of everybody's bucket list courses. Yeah. All right, you're a big Seinfeld fan. Uh, what golf brand would most likely sponsor Kramer? <laughs> Yeah, either Kirkland or Top Flight. They don't mean that as a slight. Um, you know, I, I just don't see him as as kind of a, a Mizuno or something type of guy. Um, but uh, and and I don't think any brand would would sponsor Costanza. You know, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I think certainly an off brand or some obscure brand would be most Gosh. appropriate. I just thought, can you imagine him as Slazenger? Yeah, that yeah that that I mean, or even you know the new Sunday Red. That would be quite interesting. <laughs> that would be a good show. That would be a really funny show if he was sponsored and then went back and dumped Tiger. George would have the human fund on his hat. That's right. Yeah. That's the only way he'd be able to get on the course. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what movie do you quote the most? Um, probably Anchorman. Um, or, you know, honestly, as I think about it, it's funny. Um, I think I met my wife right around the same time that Anchorman came out, and I think she realized that. I didn't have any any real original material, and that it was all just recycled uh, from from you know various movies around that time. Uh, and then a TV show would be Seinfeld for sure. 
<laughs> well, if you married her quick enough, then she didn't know you were running out of material. She thought maybe it was... Well, I know, and, I, and we're still married, fortunately, so I have to watch a lot of movies and a lot of Seinfeld to keep keep getting new material to satisfy that, you know. Well, just tell her 60% of the time you're quitting movies every time. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, and a nod to Tim Cup. Uh, if you only had one club to play a round of golf with, which club would you use? Uh, interestingly, probably my driver. It seems that, that I, I feel most comfortable the further away that I get to the you know, from the hole. Um, and... Uh, it's kind of a quick funny story around that. The one of the drivers I used to hit actually won in a uh, in a scramble competition. In and I was going to turn it into Dick Sporting Goods for money, but they didn't give me a good offer. So I said, "Well, screw it. I'll just I'll just play it." It was my favorite driver I've ever had. It was a King Cobra S3, and then I, I continued to buy King Cobras, you know, just because of that. So uh, definitely a driver. Nice. Uh, what is your favorite snack at the movies? Popcorn. Only popcorn. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I don't get. Not a candy guy. So uh, popcorn's the, the easiest thing. That no, and a big no juju doctor, mints. That and a big no. Dr Pepper. Yeah. Listen, we can do Dr Pepper all day. Yeah. Maybe that's an Illinois thing. Yep. yep. So it, it it is a, a an ambiguous state, right? So you don't have Coke or Pepsi. Yeah. No. I'm just and, Dr. I'm, Pepper. and I'm trying to be remotely healthy, so it's Diet Dr Pepper for me. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, Jonathan asked the uh, asked the question. Uh, towards you since you're a movie guy but we always ask what's your favorite snack on the golf course um you know if, if i said a transfusion that probably would be would be a bad indicator um <laughs> but, but yeah trying trying to be more of a sober human being now uh, i i would say um huge peanuts you know uh you know type of guy so anytime i can have something like that on the course it's good uh, for sure I think I just saw a reel the other day. Um, the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills was playing a game where if you have your drink in your right hand and someone calls you on it, you got to drink the entire thing. Ooh. They were drinking transfusions. I don't. Yeah. Th- it, yeah, didn't, it didn't end well. That's that's the they, that's the dangerous game, as they would say. That, that yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite golf course logo? Um, that I've that I've played. No. Um, I I, I don't know. Um. I haven't played it yet, but the Sleepy Hollow logo to me just looks awesome. Um, and so there's just something about that. And then we're, I haven't played it yet, but the, the Lido, the new course at Sand Valley, I think has got a really cool logo as well. So that's a good question. I haven't, I've, I've got to think about it now and I can circle back with you. Yeah. Logos are great. We're, we're all about a good golf logo. Yeah. All absolutely. right. Who would be in your, uh, who'd be in your dream foursome? Um, my father um, and, and uh, both of my deceased grandfathers. That'd be a good day golf. Absolutely. They all they all love the game. And again, for our regular listeners, we're extending past number nine in honor of our ho- of our guest. What is your favorite film series? I mean, probably The Godfather, particularly one and two. So if I, if I think about you know trilogies, I think that's probably still uh, the best one. Um, and and maybe not necessarily a series, but in terms of a, of a director, I think what what Christopher Nolan is doing, you know, right now, and just his line of, of film portfolio the last like twenty five years is is incredible. And I'm not even like a Batman guy necessarily, and you know, yeah. love those films too. So, but I think he's just really creative. But he he makes movies that are unique, but with substance, you know. And and uh, I look forward to whatever he makes. Yeah, whatever you're I, done, I it's always a good watch. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, well. Brian, it's been fantastic having you on today. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time, uh, sharing with all of our listener, uh, all of the all the new places that they might want to find in the Midwest. Uh, if you haven't already, you need to follow Brian on Twitter, X, or whatever we call it now, at BrianTweed16. And as he comes maybe closer to your area, you can hook up with him and let him know some great places to come and play. So for uh, Robbie and Brian, I'm Jonathan, and this has been the Whole Story Podcast.